Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on simplifying Java for OOP1 students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn Java. This is part 28 in the series and is entitled Visual Programming in Java Using NetBeans. What we have been doing in the past 27 tutorials is called hard coding or hard code style of programming. An attractive and simpler style is called visual programming. It's top down for hard coding as the statements are executed by the compiler from top to bottom. On the other hand, in visual style, we design first how we want the screen to look like before writing the codes. So this hard code's equivalent in visual style can be started by making the design. This design is composed of controls such as JLabel, JTextField, and JToggleButton that are inside a JFrame. Therefore, we can say that the equivalent of system.out is a JLabel. For a scanner, it's a JText field. Another thing that's important to learn in design is the concept of event, which is like a trigger as to when a processing should happen. This event could be a button was clicked, or an enter key was pressed in a text field, or a mouse was moved, and others. Let's do activity 53 for a simple example. We will create a Java project that uses a JFrame form to contain a JText field and a JLabel. We will allow the user to enter any text via JText field, and we will create an event that when enter is pressed while in JText field, the text inside JText field will be copied to the JLabel. Let's create our new project. Next, let's call it a visual sample. Finish. This time we need a JFrame form, so right click your package, New, click Other, Swing GUI Forms. You remember the application sample form that we did, we used before. This time we're going to use a JFrame form. Next. Let's call it frame one, finish. In front of us are several new windows. Right in the middle is the J frame where we are going to make the design. On top of it are three tabs and currently we are in the design tab. Click the source tab and you will see the hard code. Don't be threatened by its look as most of it are comments. We can see that our class extends J frame, that it has a constructor, and below is the main method. Later, codes will be added here either by the system or us. Let's go back to the design. On the upper right is the palette window that contains swing containers and swing controls. These are the things that we are going to add in our frame. The window below is the property window. Remember that property is the same as state in classes. They describe a class or an object. Also here is the events, which are like behaviors in a class. The question is, whose events and properties are this? The answer is, there, on top of the window. It's for our current JFrame. Let's go back to our problem. We need the text field, so just drag it onto your frame. Now you can see that on top of the window is now JText field 1, which is the name of our JText field. So now these are the properties and events. Look that one of its properties is the text property. Let's also drag a label. Now you can see that the name of this control or this object is JLabel1, and it also has a property called text. So what we are going to do is that there is an event for JText field 1. So we have to select the JText field 1. The event is when you press the Enter key. And when you press the Enter key, whatever text we have here should now be copied onto the text of JLabel 1. So we are currently selecting JText field. Let's go to the events. There, this is action performed. This is the same as when you press the Enter key. So let's pull this down, click it. Automatically, this method was written by the system. Don't be fooled. This action for form means that an enter key was pressed in the JText field. So what we're going to do when, a parent, when an enter key is pressed, we are going to change the text property of JLabel1. We can simply type JLabel1, that is the name of our control, or 
you can use the word this, which refers to our frame. And there you can see the JLabel and JText field 1. We're going to change the text of JLabel 1, so better select JLabel 1. Change the text. So remember, set. Set means changing text there. The method is set text. We will change the text of JLabel1 to whatever is the text inside our JText field. So to call that control, again, we're going to call this and there, JText field1. This time, we're going to take the value of the text. So to take the value of the text is the same as getting the value of the text. So the method is get text. That's it. Now we can run our frame or our form there is our form let's try to change it to kfu this time I'm going to press the enter key there let's change it again to another word let's say computer press enter and there so whenever you're going to press the enter key Whatever is the text inside the text field will be copied to that of JLabels. For Activity 54, we will create a Java project that uses a JFrame form to contain a JText field, a JToggle button, and two JLabels. We will allow the user to enter a number via the JText field and create an event that when the JToggle button is clicked, the double of the number entered is computed and displayed in the last JLabel. So this time, the event is when the JToggle button is clicked, not when we press Enter key in the JText field. Furthermore, we will try to change the names of our objects or our controls. This text field, we will change its name to TF, this toggle button to BTN, and this second label to LBL. We actually don't need to create a new project, so all we're going to do is to right-click again the package, click New, and inshallah you will now see this JFrame form. Click it. We'll call it Frame 2. So what we need here are two G labels. Let's start with one G label, and beside it is a text field, and below them is a button, a JToggle button, and another label. So of course, they all have their default names. Uh, this J label one, we're not going to change its name, but instead, we're going to change uh, the text value here. We can do that by right-clicking, Edit Text, or you go to the Properties window, look for the text property, and change it. Enter a number. Okay, this J text field one, we are going to change its name. So right-click change variable name and we'll make it tf also it's a uh, text maybe we can delete it but we have to make it still longer this j toggle button we will change its name we will change it to btn and its text property we can simply also right click edit text compute square and finally this G label 2 we have to change its variable name its name to LBL and maybe its text should be initially square equal to okay so the trigger right now is when you click the button when you click the button so we have to select the button let's go to the events and there the event is also action perform. This is also the name of the event when uh, we press enter key in our text field. So again, we can do the same or simply double click this one. When you double click uh, a control, what it will do is that it will look on the list and the first uh, event it sees, that will be uh, the event that the system will write. Let's do that. Let's double click this button there button action perform so what we're going to do here is to simply compute the square uh, of the number entered in the text field uh, a little problem uh, the text field is a string and we're going to get the square uh, 
So to get the square, this string must be first converted to a number. So let's say an integer, n, will hold that number. So to convert a string to an integer, we need the method integer dot parse int. And what are we going to convert? We're going to convert the text of the text field, right? The name of the text field is tf, so we can just simply type tf. You can put this dot tf or simply tf because now our name is shorter. Dot, we will get its text, so that's get text. So now we have the number inside variable n. We can compute its square by simply multiplying n by itself. Lastly, we're going to put this square value inside the second label, and the second label has a name LBL. We will change its text so that, so that is set text. We'll start it with square equal to, and we will include the value of S. Okay, last, let's try to run it. Let's put 3, click it, and the square is equal to 9. Let's make it 7. I'm going to press Enter key. Nothing happens because we did not create an event for uh, the Enter key in the text field. We still The event is still on the button, so we have to click the button in order to get the square. Okay, so we just finished demonstrating Bissell programming in Java. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama.